In statics, we study three different kinds of stuff. Particles, rigid bodies, and systems. Now that we're dealing with systems, there are two different sort of classes of systems that we will deal with. Trusses, which we already did. We did both the method of joints and the method of sections. And then frames and machines. The only difference between a frame and a machine is that a frame generally does not have things that would move. Think bridge. A machine is something that generally would have a moving part think backhoe, except right now we're studying statics, so it's probably not moving at the moment. The statics in analyzing a frame in a machine is the same, so it doesn't really matter what the distinction is. A frame, frames and machines are systems that include at least one three-force member. If it only had two force members, then it would be a truss, because that's what a truss is. We will disassemble them, just like we did with trusses, the difference is that we're not going to look at particles then when we disassemble it in general. We will have rigid bodies because you're taking apart things that will have moments or will have forces acting at a distance. Generally, one other the difference between like the method of sections and frames and machines is that method of sections we're going to cut through the middle of a member. In general, when we're looking at frames and machines, what we're going to do is we're going to take things apart like a bicycle at the place where somebody put them together. So if I handed you a wrench and said, take this bicycle apart, you probably wouldn't start by cutting through the metal tube. You'd take it apart where there are screws. So that's sort of what we're going to do with frames and machines. We're going to look at where the parts of the object are put together. Which sort of brings us to my hint here. Think about, as you're doing some of these, what is the parts list? If you looked on the inst in the um, instruction manual on page 2A and you get a parts list, those are the parts that we're looking at. You may draw a free body diagram of any subset of those parts. So if you're looking at the whole thing, that's fine. If you're isolating just one part of it, that's fine. But you could isolate these three parts and not those four parts. Those are fine too. So let's look at one sort of example of how this all works together. This is a very simple frame with only two parts. But when you look at it, it has two rollers and one pin. So it's going to have four external reaction forces. Now that's the other clue that you're dealing with something that you're going to have to disassemble. If you can't solve it without taking it apart. When I draw the free body diagram of the external load here, this is what I end up with. I have a force up at A, up and to the right at B, and to the left at C. These are external loads. You can put them on in any direction. These are just the ones I picked. Now I have three equations here of equilibrium, for example. The sum of the forces in X, the sum of the forces in Y, and the sum of the moments at some point, which I get to pick. But I have four unknowns, so I cannot solve without disassembling the system. This system is put together here at a pin. When you take things apart at a pin, you get two forces. This is no different than it was when I took a pin apart from when the pin was connected to the ground. It's just that now my pin is connected to something else that I'm also considering. So when I take this apart, I have two forces at the pin. One of the other differences between rigid bodies and systems is that we're actually considering both sides. So we used to be taking the frame off the ground, but we weren't actually looking at the ground. Now I'm looking at both sides of this. So where I have dx and dy here, I also have dx and dy there. Newton's third law says equal and opposite. They have to be labeled the same, dx and dx, but they have to be in opposite directions. The key part here is if you take something apart and it has these two pieces, well, the other part had better have those two, so that if you added it back together again, you would come back to zero. If this is my, these are my now two free body diagrams. I still have everything I had before. I still have the external loads, I still have the applied loads, but now I have these extra two. Each of these is a rigid body, so each of these will give me three equations of equilibrium. The big thing here is that while I have now six equations, I have added three equations, I've only added two unknowns. So I used to have four unknowns and three equations. Now I have six unknowns and six equations, and I can solve that. One other thing I want to point out here, it's tempting to say that there are three equations here, three equations here, and three equations there. 
3 plus 3 plus 3 is 6. There are only 6 linearly independent equations here. These 3 are not different from these 6. So when you take this apart, with two free body diagrams, the maximum number of unknowns you can solve for is 6. And if you look at this example right here, the sum of the forces on this beam in the x direction would give you bx plus 6 minus cx equals 0. If you look at the sum of the forces in x on this beam, you get 6 minus, or excuse me, bx plus dx equals 0. And down here you're going to get 6 minus cx minus dx. And it's pretty easy to sort of look here and say, if you solved this one for dx, you'd get 6 minus cx, you put that in there, you got the same thing. So these will reproduce the relationships that are up here. So you only get this number of linearly independent equations. Now the big thing, thing with frames and machines is deciding how you're going to take it apart as the frames and machines get more complicated. But the general principles don't change at all. If you take something apart at a pin, you get two forces. If you take something apart at a cable, you're only going to get one, or a two-force member. If you take something apart at a weld, you will get two forces in a moment. All of those things are the same as they have been before.